Please join me with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome to the Hampton Board of Selectors meeting for March 13th. First thing is swearing in of Officer Brandon Whitehead. Mr. Chairman, uh, honor and a privilege again to be here before the board. I thank you again for allowing us to do this. I think it's important for the community to get an opportunity to see the uh, great quality of, of folks we bring into work uh, on their behalf, especially in the police department. So thank you again. Um, the officer we're going to swear in tonight is Officer Brandon Whitehead, who's been with us for about one year uh, as a special officer and uh, kind of unique. We don't have a lot of us that... Uh, Actually, a resident of the town of Hampton, a product of our school system, and a 2008 graduate of Winnicott High School. So there's only four of us in the PD that work in full-time that have that distinction. So it's kind of nice when we can uh, hire some of the local talent. So at this point, I'm going to ask uh, Town Clerk Jane Seifer to come forward and administer the oath. Brandon, if you would step up here, please. of Hampton and the County of Rockingham to Brandon R. Whitehead of Hampton, New Hampshire and the County of Rockingham. Whereas there is a vacancy in the office of full-time police officer in said town, and whereas we, the subscribers, have confidence in your ability and integrity to perform the duties of said office, we do hereby appoint you the said Brandon R. Whitehead as full-time police officer of said town. And upon your taking the oath of office and having this appointment and the certificate of said oath of office recorded by the town clerk, you shall have the powers, perform the duties, and be subject to the liabilities of such office until another person shall be chosen and qualified in your stead. Given under my hand this 13th day of March, 2017, Fred Welch, Town Manager. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Brandon R. Whitehead. I, Brandon R. Whitehead. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent upon me. All the duties incumbent upon me. As full-time police officer. As full-time police officer. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Of this constitution. Of this constitution. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Chief and Deputy Chief and also the Board of Selectmen, uh, my parents, and Sia, and there's a lot of people in this room that have helped me and supported me along the way, and I just want to thank you guys. Uh, it means the world to me to be able to work and serve in the town that I grew up in. So, thank you. Thank you. Upstairs, so the board can continue the business. We'll do pictures and greetings upstairs. Thank you. Good deal. Now we get it. Public comment. Yep. Yep. Here we go. Should be pretty quick. Start of the meeting. She's here. <laughs> Do it here. Okay, okay, at this time we'll have the public comment period. Anybody would like to speak? Please come up to state your name. You have three minutes. 
Good evening, Mary Louise Woolsey, 148 Little River Road. Uh, I hope everybody stays safe tomorrow. Um, uh, three quick things, because Mr. Bean interrupted last time and got me a little off key, so I, I have a couple of things to share with you. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, you said that uh, you consulted with the former chair of the Budget Committee, who of course was your son, uh, Nick Bridal, and that uh, he didn't, uh, he looked over the schedule for the Budget Committee and he didn't find anything amiss. And then I checked after he said he had checked and there was no problem. Um, I'll refer you to call RSA 32 colon 17, Duties of Governing Body and Other Officials. The governing bodies of municipalities adopting this subdivision shall review statements together with all information needed for producing the budget, et cetera, at such time as the Budget Committee shall fix. So the Budget Committee dates were very clearly on the meeting town meeting calendar, which you access on Hampton.gov. Uh, also, uh, speaking on the email situation, Attorney Gerald is called town council. He works obviously for the board of selectmen, but as he's been speaking and as I read the printout that's online that uh, that he placed at our request, he talks about other communities who've had large fines. Uh, because of discrepancies or problems and so forth with email. If he is town council and representing you and us, and he's afraid of perhaps suits and judgments against the town, why wouldn't he be more proactive? Why wouldn't he have picked up the telephone and called me or called a member of the budget committee to talk about it instead of sitting here for months waiting potentially for a lawsuit? Number three, I did read uh, Mr. Sullivan's uh, article in the uh, newspaper on Friday, and I got to see verbatim uh, Selectman Barnes' comments. I would say that I would think that ignorance and arrogance is not what the taxpayers and residents of this community need. Thank you. Anybody else would like to get up and speak? Mr. McMahon. Good evening, Michael McMahon, 49 Ann's Lane. I'd just like to take a moment, since this is your last meeting as a board currently constituted, um, to thank you for your work. I know you get a lot of complaints from uh, taxpayers and citizens and employees. I'm all of the above, as you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you put forth an awful lot of effort, and you put all of you, all of you put yourselves out there to represent all of us as taxpayers and citizens. And I'd like to thank you for that. On behalf of the men and women of the fire department, I'd especially like to thank you in your support through a very difficult time at the beginning of this board last spring through the illness and death of one of our own, Kyle Jamison. That was challenging for all, and I think that the board represented themselves and the town very well in a most difficult time. And for that, you have our gratitude. Additionally, <coughs> some of you know, I've been involved in negotiating <coughs> for firefighters and fire officers for much of my career here with the town. I've dealt with, I can't tell you how many different selectmen, several town managers, three or four fire chiefs. Um, I'm sure I will, uh, hopefully, I will live to make it through several more of all of the above. <laughs> um, I would like to thank the board for the way that they comported themselves during negotiations. Contrary to what might be believed in public, we were not told yes on everything. We came in with some offers that I thought were fair and reasonable, and you, as the watchdogs of the taxpayers and citizens, said that that might be nice, but it's not going to happen. That's your job. It's not always easy, but you did it. And I thank you for doing that. Most of your employees will be at work doing their job tomorrow on what's going to be a difficult day. Apparently we're getting a couple of feet of snow. I'll be at work. 
the men and women of Public Works are certainly going to work. They have to set up for an election. They may have to plow snow. They may have to tear it down. All your Teamsters upstairs are going to be working in the back of the house at the school counting votes. I would urge all of the people out there to come out and support your employees. We're going to be out there supporting you tomorrow and every other day. Please come out and support your employees on Articles 15, 16, 17, and 18. Thank you. Thank you. So anybody else would like to speak? Yes, sir. Gary Pohl, 4 Lion Street. I didn't get a chance to speak last week about the Midnight Cafe. I'd just like to throw my two cents in on this thing. I really think that the thing should not be voted on by the selectmen. I think it should be put in a warrant article and let the town decide. And then after that, if, if it is come, if they do vote yes, then they should, you guys should probably make the whatever regulations um, you're going to have. One suggestion would be just to let them open on Friday and Saturday nights to start off with and then go from there. And like Mayor Daly always said, tomorrow vote early and often. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Anybody else would like to get up and speak? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board. Yes, uh, I... Announcements to community calendar. There you go. I would just like to say that um, the actually the off-duty firefighters have volunteered that if anyone would like to get picked up and brought to the polls and brought back home, they would be willing to do that so you can contact <clears> them. And it is an important day, so, you know, it's not supposed to be too bad in the morning, so I would urge everyone to try to get there, or maybe they can get a ride with someone. And quickly, just remind everyone, because I told the commissioners I would, precinct meeting is March 24th, 7 p.m., and if you are a member of the precinct, you can register up until that point at 7 o'clock. Thank you. Yes, uh, voting tomorrow, please get out and vote. Get out early. Try, try and miss the snow, and if you need a ride, like uh, Regina said, the off-duty firemen have offered to do that. There's a, a website I think you can go to, or a phone number I think yeah. that's available online. That would be good. The one thing I'd like to say is Article 2, which uh, deals with accessory dwelling units, is enabling legislation. It is really important that we pass that that means that Hampton will be in control of how those uh, new units are controlled. Without it, we have to do what the state tells us to do. So it's simply to give us the power to take care of our own towns. That's Article 2 on accessory dwelling units. Yeah, uh, exciting day tomorrow, um, and get out there and uh, look at that ballot uh, uh, and those ballot questions and those warrant articles uh, very hard. I, of course, endorse what the selectmen have endorsed, and, and I'm very enthusiastic about that. We've heard uh, uh, a distinguished and long-tenured firefighter talk about uh, their hard work, their commitment, those uh, labor contracts. Uh, very, very enthusiastic about those, some infrastructure needs. And then, of course, there's the school side, which we leave alone. But an exciting day to participate in democracy. See, there were people in there doing it today, and I'm very excited. Mr. Chairman, uh, thank you so much for your leadership this last year. Uh, you did a great job. You've always done a great job. You've been a great public servant. Uh, the rest of the board, um, not quite as good as you, but darn good. Um, I, I've appreciated working with uh, uh, Regina and Jim and, of course, this young man to my right. Good luck tomorrow on your election, um, and uh, we'll be thinking of you while we're at the polls. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Sure. <clears throat> <clears throat> yes, we had a lot of interest today uh, about whether the polls would be open, and I just want to say that there's a pretty lady on Little River Road that's not happy. I want to tell you she does have blonde hair, um, and uh, but even she donated her husband to uh, pick up uh, voters if anyone needs a ride, and I think I left you that name, Mr. Welch, and I'll I, I think sure Christina has it, yes. Okay, great. Yeah. And uh, so it's going to be fun tomorrow. Everybody <coughs> needs to come out. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. It's, been a, it's been a pleasure to serve on this board the past three years and the past year's chairman, and, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow if we're coming back. So, Mr. McMahon, um, what would be the number to call if they, uh, if they were looking for a ride? If they want to call the dispatch number at 926-3316, we'll uh, coordinate it from there. Very good. Thank you very much. So if, if you are looking for a ride and you need a ride, uh, the off-duty firefighters will be doing that, and the phone number to call them is 926-3316. Thank you. Consent agenda. We have a entertainment license. 
for Millie's Tavern and the Boardwalk Cafe. We have parade and public gathering licenses for Ragnar Reach the Beach Relay and Ride to the End Alzheimer's. And we have one for the use of the town property, the Ashworth parking lot for the Reach the Beach Relay on 915, 916. Do I have a motion to accept the I'll make that motion? Motion by Rick, seconded by Regina. All those in favor? Unanimous. Very good. Have the approval of the February 26, 27th minutes. A motion to approve the minutes. Second. Motion, motion by Regina, seconded by Jim. All those in favor? Unanimous. Now, manager's report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, property owners need to come to the assessor's office to obtain the proper forms to apply for property exemptions by April 15th. You're going to hear this again a couple more times. I want to make sure everybody has the opportunity to be there. Uh, charitable organizations in the community need to file their property inventories by statute on April 15th as well to keep their tax exemptions. Current use applications must be filed by April 15th under the statute. Please see the assessor's office in order to find the, get the proper forms. The Hampton Beach Village District exemptions must be filed by April 15th. Those deal with those folks who want to have exemptions from paying for the entertainment portion of their budget. We are placing on the town website the first report from the New Hampshire Coastal Risk and Hazards Commission. You should see that up sometime late this week. Um, Please be sure to vote tomorrow, March 14th, from 7 to 8 p.m. at the Winnicott High School. And as was said earlier, we expect uh, the storm to be very light starting in the morning. And um, please go in the morning if you can. We also have a couple of other items. Uh, I, we sent out, a, the Public Works sent out a notice today uh, regarding the collection of trash. If you have a problem, please see their website. Uh, we're, of course, moving things up as, as the storm comes along. The transfer station will be closed on Tuesday as scheduled, and residents are reminded that it is unlawful to place and deposit snow upon any town street or sidewalk. Um, I've, I've had a couple of times I've had people ask me as to why it's just improper to plow that material over and leave it on the side of the road. If it freezes and one of our trucks comes along with a plow down, plowing the street, and hits it once it's frozen, you can actually tip the plow over, tip, tip the truck over. And I know people may not believe that, but I've actually seen it happen, so it's probably not one of the things we'd like to do. Um, we have, uh, and I believe I sent this to the, uh, to the Board of Selectmen today, so it'll be on the, on the, uh, on the agenda for next week for your consideration, uh, and the paperwork is with it. We've been asked if we would extend the contract for paving from last year. Uh, as you know, there were a couple of streets that we did not pave because we we're still taking care of the acceptance of those streets and making sure they were, in fact, going to be town roads under the statute. Uh, and that will be taken care of, I hope, tomorrow. Um, they've also advised us that they will extend last year's contract in price. Uh, we understand that's a 5 to 7 percent increase in the price coming this coming year. So they're willing to... Uh, uh, keep that contract at the same level and pave the remainder of the streets that could not be taken care of last year. So you'll see that on your next agenda. Um, you have on this agenda, of course, the uh, Sun Valley, which is coming up in a few minutes. And that's it, Mr. Chairman. Any questions for town manager? I just, where are we on the Gristmill Dam? Um, we should be getting to finish. No, maybe I can tell you exactly. I think it's on this report. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Apparently, it's not. I know that they're finishing up the uh, the contracts and getting ready to go up to bid. So, okay, it should be fairly soon. Because I I, I know that you know the before the planning board came the the group that's doing the condos right above that. Right. And there's going to be a lot of blasting. And I know that they talked about it that, that that's being watched very carefully. And it I is. just I just want to make sure 
you know, to reiterate to those people that live down there and stuff, that, and, and especially right next to the mill and, and the grist mill itself and stuff, that that is going to be watched extensively and extensively researched before they get in there and blast. We're right? going to have inspectors on duty when they're doing anything because it's, I've requested the fire department to have those inspectors there since they're in charge of all blasting and issuance of the permits. Uh, there's going to be seismic uh, monitors set up so that we know what's going on. We have a good good recording of what happens in that entire area. And, of course, there are some houses close to that site as well, so we're very concerned about those and keeping a constant watch on those during the, even the progress of the work that they're doing without blasting. We want to make sure everything's correct. Okay, as long as that, I want to make sure that's really kept a good eye on. Oh, yeah, that's very important to us, and it's very important to the Avatars, too. Right, absolutely. Very important. Rick. If I was, if I lived near there, I'd make sure I took uh, pictures in my basement. I do more than the basement. Yeah, I do every room All in the house. The outside of the house. The outside, the yeah. interior, everything. Yeah, because we, I, you know, there's been problems in the past with things like that. Blasting could be, and that whole area sits on ledge, it certainly does. and and uh, we all know what happens when you you uh, strike something solid that's next to you. You're going to get a reverberation someplace. In this case, we're going to be the people who are working down there are going to be dynamiting, and that's a little bit more than hitting something with a sledgehammer. Uh, so there's going to be repercussions to all of that ledge work down there. You need to be very careful on your property, everything you own, you should take extensive photographs of it. If there's any cracks in your basement wall or floor or something like that, you need to actually take pictures of that with a, with a measurement, a, a ruler right next to it so you can see how big it is. And if it changes, then you, you should file an immediate claim. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's good. You know, it's. I'm glad to hear you say that. Um, <clears throat> What about um, the, you're still taking the letters for the 3 a.m. Um, restaurant? We are, and I, I believe maybe the chairman should announce this. Why don't you go ahead? So that's I'll, going to be I'll, I'll, the answer. We'll go through that, but I will read it. They, the letters have been coming in, and we, we gave people a week so they could come in. Yeah, because I have some some people drop some off, and I meant to bring them in to give to Fred, and I right. forgot them. You, you can do that and bring them in, and we'll put them in the file, but I'll read this after. Okay. If uh, Mr. Bean has anything. Negative, sir. Okay, so we're on the old business. So I will read a letter that we just received. This afternoon, I said to Chairman Bridal, uh, I wish to inform you, inform the Board of Selectmen that Al Flurry has decided to withdraw his request for a review of the town's current policy regarding late night food service at the beach. At the public hearing held Monday, March 6, we listened to the support and expressed that many individuals, but we also heard the concerns of many residents and more specifically those concerns raised by Chief Sawyer. Mr. Flurry has no interest in placing the town and the police department in a difficult budgetary and staffing situation and understands that proceeding with his plans for late night food service this summer would do just that. If there is a change to come, it would be only fair and reasonable that all interested parties have sufficient time to prepare all the changes that are necessary to come. Accordingly, Mr. Flurry continues to refine his ideas for his new restaurant and the plan to submit a warrant article on the subject for the consideration of the town meeting in 2018. <coughs> Such an article will, shall likely include without limitation conditions for all late night food service such as only by restaurants up to all code requirements only to occur inside the building facilities and certainly no f food uh, sale of alcohol. Thank you for the board for your attention in this matter and holding a very informative public hearing. I think we all learned a lot that evening. Sincerely, Steve Ells. So that answered your question there a little bit, sir. Uh, I, I, I knew that was coming in. Uh, I had spoken to Mr. Flurry, and he had said that he wanted to work with the town, not try to be. And so he's going to come up next year with a with a warrant article, and I agree with you totally. That's, yeah, I did. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think that that's great that he came to that decision because I think the Warren article is definitely the way to go. Yeah. And uh, Al really sounds like a top business leader with making a decision like that. Absolutely. Yeah, Thank I'd like you. to just reiterate that, you know, he, he came in, he listened to the public, and he made a decision according to that. 
And you listen to the police chief especially, and I, I think that really says a lot for him and his businesses. Really big. Absolutely. One other thing on the old business, we have the schedule for Board of Selectmen to be at the <clears throat> polls tomorrow. And since Mr. Bean is not on the ballot this time, which is hard to believe, um, he tried real hard. It has it has to be between Mr. Bean, uh, Mrs. Barnes, uh, Miss Barnes, and Jim Waddell on when they are going to be there. So, well, of course, Mr. Chairman, I'm like Jim. I'm I'm not retired, so I would uh, defer to him to uh, stay there the whole day and the whole evening. <laughs> I I have no life. <laughs> so I can be there early in the morning. Okay. I can be there the majority of the day, and I can come back at night. And, okay. And so I, I, I'll, I'll be there when they open. So I'm going to pass this around to you. Okay. You can fill it out on that side, and then okay. everything that's left over we can give to Mr. Bean. Thank you, but Mr. But I had Barrow. better not see Mr. Bean running down at the beach for anything <laughs> while he's claiming to be working. <laughs> anything on the old business? Also, the old business. Seeing none. <laughs> Anything under new business? There you have the polling schedule that I just passed out. We have the Sun Valley Beach Cleaning. Do you want to explain that, Mr. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the Public Works Department is asking for a waiver of the purchasing policy. We bid this out for several years in a row, and um, as you know, we're required to have, with, without a waiver, at least three qualified bidders. And there's only one operation that can do this uh, currently that has a piece of equipment. So we're kind of stuck regardless of going out and spending a lot of money bidding this. If we had any other people to bid it to, we would, but we don't. So we're asking for a waiver from the board uh, to continue to clean the beach and to exempt it from the provisions of the purchasing policy. Uh, and I will make the comment that they are uh, keeping the same cost this year as they had last year. And just for those folks who want to know, we received no complaints last year. Mr. Chairman, I would move uh, in a, to uh, approve that, and uh, the caveat being that uh, um, it does comply with uh, our, uh, the exception to the bid process, and they do do an excellent job, and I've observed that down there, and the beach do product job. is excellent. So moved. I just would like to say, if you, only because you just said that you had no <coughs> Complaints. I just had a complaint about it. Is uh, what was the price? Is it fifteen thousand? Fifteen thousand two hundred dollars. Yeah, because one of when I was putting up signs recently, a lady came running out, and that was the question she asked. How mm -hmm. did it go from four thousand to fifteen thousand? The four thousand dollar job that we had before was a state, oh. and and they did it when they liked okay. to do it, not when it needed to be done. Well, I pretty much said that, but not exactly. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I hope she's listening tonight. Actually, it was the state's contractor. It's not that the state employee is running it, but uh, they, they, they had under the contract to do the main beach, which is out here on uh, uh, between, well, between the South Park and, and all the way up to uh, uh, the end of the, um, be just beyond Church Street. And by the time they finished that, very often they were not available to, uh, in fact, do it that day. So they skipped it, and they only they only would do it once a week, uh, at the best. And we averaged once every three or four weeks during the course of the summer, and that wasn't satisfactory for the fifty million dollars worth of uh, property that was fronting right where they were doing the work. So, and the people that are over there are very happy, from what I understand. So well, we've had no complaints, which is good. <laughs> and that's not the way it always was. That's it true. It's very true. Thank you. So I have a motion and a second to direct you to second? Yeah. All right. All those in favor? Unanimous. Perfect. Quickly while you're on that subject. Sir. We also have the beach that's north of Place Cove. We do. And, but we have our own. Uh, the kids go up and pick that, correct? Because the tide comes right up to the, to yeah, the rocks. It does. So. It comes right up to the rocks. And, and it's a difficult beach to clean because we can't get equipment down there without doing a major amount of construction work. And the state has denied us permits to do any work of any kind up there, and, and, and it's, it, it's very difficult. So we have to just do the best job we can. I think with, with, the biggest the... problem up there is the seaweed. Right. Okay. Which is natural. 
Well, in this case, it's not natural seaweed. It's, it's <clears throat> invasive seaweed. So it seems like it's natural because it comes in clumps yeah. big enough you can't haul it away. Do we have anything else on the new business? Closing comments. I would just like to uh, congratulate Rusty for doing a good job as uh, chairman. Thank you very much. I'd like to congratulate Rusty also. And Rusty, maybe you can just so that people understand how the decision was made to have the vote tomorrow that, that we had to follow, you know. Well, and I, I, I've seen a lot of conversation on that on, on, on Facebook and that, you know, people have heard that some of these towns, some of the towns around us and some of the towns throughout the state have, have changed those dates. Um, we had a, I had a meeting here this morning at 7.30 with the town manager. We also had a meeting at noontime with um, the governor and um, emergency management, and then we had a meeting again at 1.30 here uh, with the town of, town moderator, again the town clerk, and the governor was on on a speakerphone, uh, and and the emergency manager director, and from what we have been told, that the law does not provide to put off voting because of a snow day and the law states that you must vote on the second Tuesday in March and so lack of of anything in the law that re allows you to do that we are required to have our voting on the second Tuesday in March uh, it's not something that we have any control of the Board of Selectmen has no control over this somebody made a comment today jokingly saying that the the moderator in a town is basically God for two days a year, during one during deliberative session, the other is on voting day. But it, it, it falls under his prerogative. He's the one that manages and uh, takes care of the voting, and so it comes from him. It has no, no, um, we have no place to say whether we can do that or not. We know there's a concern. There is a big storm. All we can suggest is that those people that are out there, if they can get out, vote, vote early, get back home. Uh, fortunately, we the, the firefighters have now come up and said the off-duty guys will, will give people a ride if they need, but it's out of our hands. You know, I've, and I heard today, well, what about those other towns? Those other towns are going to have a lot of legal problems because the way it's written and the way they voted, uh, there'll be challenges, and I'm sure there will, and I'm sure we have people that, w that live in this town that if we had changed it, would be the first ones up there to make challenges on whether we held a legal vote. So it's tomorrow. Be safe, be careful, and please get out and vote. Thank you. So, anything else? Motion, Motion to adjourn in 1932. Motion, second. All those in favor? Thank you.